welcome back to the Women of Courage online Bible study. We are in week three of the Friendship on Purpose reading plan. And today I'm bringing you a conversation with Leisha Epperson about the power of sharing our stories and the gift of a friend who helps us remember. A friend who helps us remember who God is, what he says, and what he is doing in our lives. This is a powerful conversation and I know it's going to encourage your heart. Come join us. Alicia, in your devotion, you talk about a significant dream that you had and how it took you several years to share it with anyone. Will you walk us through that season of keeping it to yourself? And then what I really want to know is what gave you courage to finally share that dream with a friend? Okay, so yeah, three years is a long time, right? Yeah. Um, but it wasn't like a dream, like I went to sleep and I'd have a dream. It was more vision-like, sure. like I'd be washing dishes and I'd, like someone tapped you on the shoulder. Mm. Um, whatever I'm doing, just going about my day, it would happen. It would happen on and off for three years. Um, I think for me, that season was more like, you know, you're just under the shadow of his wing, right? You, it's a tender time and you recognize that. And I recognize it as God speaking to me, but at the same time, like, what, what does this mean? Yeah. So three years in, um, I don't know that I actually, and actually I did not specifically say, okay, I'm going to tell someone, but the moment was right. Hmm. And a moment arrived and I don't know why it took three years for that to happen, but hmm. that moment happened. And when it did, I said, I, I shared it. and. From my sharing, she, she said something which kind of wrapped itself around the dream and made the vision and made it all make sense. So, gosh, I, I totally um, know that it was the best thing. It was the right thing to, to share it at that moment because it helped move it. You know, there was progress from that point. Right. So you, did you notice a shift between when you were just those three years of kind of processing it alone and trying to figure out like, what does this mean? Like, what is God telling me? And then it sounds like there was added value or added affirmation by sharing it with someone else. You got it. So affirmation. So you know how you can kind of talk. I think we can talk ourselves out of the communication we have with God, right? Like, yeah. like he's, I know God is talking to me, right? But I think we can talk ourselves out of that. And so by talking to her and sharing it with her, it, you know, one, it made me be accountable for what I was saying. Right. Mm -hmm. And her listening to it and then reflecting back to me what I said and then adding something to it. Um, it really did that word affirmation. It affirmed what was going on and was like the, the next watering, like, okay, that now it's to water it now. And then we can send it off to the next thing. And things began to happen. Other things began to happen. Like the dream kind of blossomed. and mm. came to yeah. yeah. I think sometimes when we're in that place of trying to figure out like, what am I hearing? Like, what are the next steps for me? I can feel resistant to sharing with someone. I don't have all the words to describe it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be willing to come to the, a friend with like an entire package of like, this is what I'm learning or this is what God said. And this is what it means. But it's not always like that. Right. Sometimes we have to come with like our little pieces or like, this doesn't make sense to me, but somehow I want to share it with you too. Yeah. There were no words in this vision. Right. It, it was not like I was having, it was a dream sequence. It was just a vision mm -hmm. of myself in a place and me not knowing what it meant. but knowing, having like this assurance that um, I would spend the rest of my life in a place much like it. Mm -hmm. And so I knew it was like some kind of permanent thing that was happening. So I yeah. took it very seriously, but I held it close because I, I think I didn't, I, I didn't know what it meant. I had no idea. And in sharing it with her, she said the word seminary in our conversation. Mm -hmm. And that word wrapped itself around that vision. And within a few months, I was in seminary. Like, it just really happened just like that. Like, and where we are recording right now, you are at 
Union Theological Seminary. Yay! Right? <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So, seminary, absolutely. Yeah. So what do you think is at stake when we as women choose to process our stories alone? What's at stake if we withhold from sharing to a trusted friend when that opportunity arises? I think what's at stake is the, the loss of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I can't say that I would have continued to have this vision. Mm -hmm. I can't say that um, I might have just given up on it. I might have, you know, I, I might have gotten tired of it and just felt like, eh, whatever, and just not valued its, its significance any longer. I might have lost that. But sharing with her added something to it. And it just, like I said, it just gave it another, it, helped it to grow. It helped it to continue its growth and to actually manifest itself to this, this next phase of my life. Yeah. Um, I love telling that story because it is so awesome how God did that. It is. And you would never have known that that friend was going to hear the vision of, you know, if you talk about in your devotion, um, you know, that maybe it looks like a church, mm -hmm. right? It um, yeah. And for me, it looks like I would only describe it as a church. Um, my upbringing was in a, um, a non-denominational church with a Pentecostal Bantai Fay, and mm -hmm. we met at music studios and school auditoriums. So I really had no context for the kind of church that I was seeing myself in. Okay. Um, but yeah. yeah, it was a church, and I knew that this meant somehow I was going to be in a space like that. Mm -hmm. And, and it would be for the, it was forever. It was like, I was going to be involved in this and it was going to last forever. And guess what? Just on Tuesday, I preached at St. John the Divine, the cathedral. Like, what the what? That's amazing. See? That's amazing. That's and amazing. all because I, sh I believed in what was God, what God was telling me. I believed that he was talking, yeah. to me, right? Yeah. And trusted that I could share that with a friend yes. and that that friend could reflect something it, to, to pour something else on it. And obviously that was God, right? That was, yes. Jesus, you know, putting the next piece of the puzzle together. Like, okay, here, you're ready for the next piece. Yes. Um, awesome. Yeah. Right? No. And I love what you said about how your friend, you know, added, added value and you wouldn't have known that she was going to say that word seminary. No. No. It reminds me um, of several years ago, I was in a season and I really felt like the Lord was saying to me, like, I'm going to start to open some doors for you, Becky. And I had prayed a long time, like, I don't want doors that are open because of my own striving um, or performing, but just that you're going to open. And as that started to happen, life got <laughs> busy and a little crazy, but I felt like the Lord was telling me, um, you know, Becky, I'm not going to open a door for you and then push you through and leave you. And so uh -huh. I, had, I had said this to a friend a couple of times, like, oh, I just got to remember, like, God's not going to open a door and push me through and leave me. Right, right. And one day, my friend, after I'd said this a few times, she said, Becky, you keep on talking about these doors that God is opening for you. And I feel like he's given me a vision for you of what that door looks like. It's wow. Not like a small little door. And he, you're right. He's not going to push you through. But she, right. she laid out this beautiful vision of these white French doors and this like swinging wide open. Wow. And on the other side, there was like this lush and beautiful garden. And she said, mm -hmm. Becky, that is what God has for you. you. It's, not, it's not a tiny door and you're like barely like eking through the crack. Right, right. That, that door is wide open, right? It's right. wide open. And I never, I mean, my feeling about these doors was so small. And by sharing it vulnerably with a friend, and she, like you said, added this value to it that I couldn't have expected. And I tell you, Lisha, like that vision of these white French doors and this garden has mm -hmm. stayed with me. Yeah. And every time I feel like a new door opens, I think of that. I think, thank you. Yeah. Like, I'm in the garden because you've given it to me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you see, and you don't let go of that vision, right? So you right. keep hold on. And I still hold on to that. Like, I remember that that vision. It's not like I have it over, like it's a consecutive thing like it used to be. Right. But it's something yeah. that I really hold dear and mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of a, a remembrance kind of thing that strengthens me, right? Like, like okay. And I all, so it, it kind of centers everything that I'm doing and just affirming to me that you're doing the right thing. Like you are listening and you are taking the steps and you are doing the right thing. 
Yes. It's been, yes. It's been tremendous. It's been tremendous. I love that. In your devotion, you talk about the story in Luke 24 about when a group of women went to Jesus's tomb mm-hmm. together. And mm-hmm. I'm wondering what stands out to you about the way that they remembered and were witness bearers together in that heavy moment. Well, yeah. So you, I, I can, I'm only, I can only just imagine it. Right. right. Um, like if it was me and I went alone, mm-hmm. I'd probably be so stuck in my grief. I might not even believe it. I, I you know, I, I, I don't have anyone to affirm my story, affirm this, this truth of what I just witnessed. Right. And I think the women there together, that's what happens. It's like, you, you saw this mm-hmm. and there's somebody else who saw it with you. You know, people saw it with you. They know, and you hold each other in this truth. You become this little community of a witness of truth bearers, right? Uh-huh. Um, and you're accountable to each other for that truth. So um, I thought that particular passage really touched me as far as that story that I tell and mm-hmm. how a woman, a friend, um, really was able to help me hold, like create another little story with me. Another, Like it was one story and then she, we got a new story because she added something to it. Now she's part of the story and I can tell it and she can tell it as well now. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. And I love how in, so in Luke 24, we see the women who are there and then these angels appear to them. Right. And then they ask, you know, why are you looking for the living among the dead? And then they quote to the women, to Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James. Mm -hmm. Um, they say it is necessary that the son of man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified and rise on the third day. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Jesus had said those very yeah. words. Yeah. And so then in verse eight, it says, and they remembered his words. And they remembered. And right? they remembered and they remembered it together. But I think you're right because had it just been one alone, they could have, is that really what Jesus said? Is that really what he said? Right? Like, you don't have anyone to kind of help you back up the story or to affirm the truth, right? right. Um, yeah, or like your, your vision with the French, do- the, the beautiful doors in the garden, you know, it's like if you don't have anyone to, like your friend shared that with you and now you, you hold that story together and you right. both know it, right? Mm-hmm. It's both of your truths now, right? Right, and like for me and my friend, as we continue to, to share life and you know share what's going on, whether it's within motherhood or ministry or yeah. writing or whatever, and I say something about else about like, you know, this is what's happened this week, and, she's, and she reminds me. She'll say, you, those are the doors. Right, she, <laughs> right. exactly. Right. So even like if like my grip loosens on that stone of remembrance, like she helps me hold on to it, and I can yeah. only imagine that that's, what these women did and especially later it says they went to the to the disciples the apostles and many of them didn't believe the women people didn't believe that's right right but now it's witnesses right it's not just one person telling the story yeah. it's you know several people telling the story and um it builds credibility for the story right right um Friends, I know that you are reading in the Encouraged Devotional Bible too, but if you haven't read um, Leisha's devotion, friends, help us remember yet. It is so beautiful. I like have the whole thing underlined, but, but um, these simple words stopped me in my tracks. You wrote, God still speaks. Yeah. Spoke through the angels to the women at Jesus's tomb. Okay, I just have to read the whole thing because this was too good. God still speaks. In dreams and visions, through relationships and encounters, God speaks a transformative call to remembrance. We are called to help each other remember. How do we be women who listen well and help others remember what God has said in our everyday friendships? I think it goes back to that that community, Mm-hmm. accountability, mm-hmm. Um, just that relationship thing, that iron, sharpening iron. iron. Um, we are called to, to assist each other on this journey, right? And we do that by helping each other remember, and sp- mm-hmm. specifically when it's a faith journey, right? Because yeah. these are things that we don't necessarily see, 
but they are things that are being manifested in our lives as we speak, as we live them. Um, these, these, like you said, I think you said a touchstone of remembrance, you know, that it, it is something that you can draw from and that you can have strength to continue keeping on that faith, right? Your faith will, I, I know like anybody else, you know, your faith, sometimes it's, it's really, really high and sometimes it's really, really low. And we need each other to keep telling the story. Like yeah. Becky, remember the doors? Mm-hmm. Do what you gotta do, right? Yes. Yeah, I think it takes, but we have to be willing to share with someone or a group of someone's the pieces as they're unfolding, right? Yeah. We yeah. Have to, be willing to say like the story isn't finished, and to be vulnerable and take that risk of being like, but I don't, I don't want to go it alone. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me in this particular instance, it took three years, um, and it wasn't three years of oh, I will never tell anyone, but it was me kind of telling myself, uh, what is this? You know, just wrestling with it. Yeah. Um, but. Most, most of the time, I think I would err on the side of, I'm going to share this with someone because yeah. you help, even if nothing else, they help you hold it. Right. Um, these things are often, they're heavy things. So just, yeah. even, just to even have someone help you hold it is a good thing. Yes. Help you hold it. Yeah. Um, I remember just, I don't know, a couple of months ago, I was having met a couple of girlfriends for dessert one night. We had something to celebrate. And in the midst of our evening conversation, um, we each kind of ended up sharing some of the burdens on our hearts. And one friend was talking about how she's kind of in this in-between season of motherhood and maybe needing to get a job, but not really mm-hmm. knowing, like, mm-hmm. God, what am I made for? Like, what am I supposed to be doing? Right. And so we were just affirming her, like, this is what we see in you, Sarah. Like, mm-hmm. you are, yeah. this is how God has made you and wired you. And so we committed to, you know, praying, praying that God would, um, you know, lead her to the right opportunity and fast forward a few months. And now she has a job and it is both stretching her, but also she's been sharing like, guys, I have this joy that I did not expect or think possible. Mm-hmm. And then the circumstances and we were together able to kind of hold this story and be like, remember, 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 remember you kind of prayed for this thing, right? Right. We're like, so even when it's hard, even when it feels uncertain, like we, we see God has moved in this. Yeah, absolutely. Room. You definitely see from one place to the next, right? Yeah. You're not, um, it is not stagnant. It may feel stagnant sometimes, mm-hmm. but it is not. There's always movement. Yeah. And I find that sometimes like when we are just living life, it's hard. It can be hard to see God's fingerprints, his movement. Yeah. In our own selves, in our circumstances. Day to day, right? In the day to day ordinary, which is not really glamorous most of the time. Right. right. But sometimes even a friend, you know, from the outside can see something that we can't see ourselves. Mm -hmm. And And it's so important for us to receive that kind of communication and affirmation and also to give that affirmation to others. Yeah. Yeah. When we see each other and when you have a friend that um, you know you can pour something into, you pour it in. No, right. give the good word. Give the good word. I love that. Give the good word. What yeah. else, um, Lisa, would you say to maybe a sister who is holding something alone right now? Maybe she's holding something that feels scary or heavy or she can't name it. Maybe she knows like you that this is going to be significant. And what if like, can I trust someone else to hold it with me? What word of encouragement would you leave with her? I would say... Um, don't rush it because I think um, I'd, th- I'd say hold it. I'd say hold it and pray. Um, mm-hmm. And pr- one of the prayers you can have is to pray for that moment or that person that you can share it with. Mm-hmm. And then do so. When that moment happens, trust that God is in that moment and trust that God um, has the next step for you. And it's very likely within the words that the, the person is going to share with you. Yeah. 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 That is a good word. I love when you wrote this. You said, I learned the importance of memory and the power of friendship on purpose to help us sustain or clarify a vision. More than anything, I'm learning to remember. Friends help us remember. And I think that that would be my word of encouragement, friends, is to let someone remember with you. Let someone share the piece that you're holding now, because chances are that you, we, you guys are going to be able to point back together to say, like, remember this moment? Like, look what God has done. 
Yeah. Well, the blessing always is right. It's not just for you. It's for everyone. It's for everyone in your community to say, look, look what happened to Becky. Remember that? Yeah. It's your, your friend at the table and the job and the children. Look, remember that? Right. Um, and in my instance, the same thing. Look, remember when you told me about that dream? Yeah. And then you're going to be graduating from seminary and you... I am. May, are, May 17th. <laughs> and you are preaching, you know, as God opens yeah. the doors for you to do so. And... Yeah. It strengthens not only your own faith, but of your family and those that you have let into the process. I think Amen. A beautiful gift that we can give. Amen. Let's be women of courage who are willing to hold each other's stories and bear witness to what God has done. Friends will help you remember. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.